Well, hello everyone. Russ Barkley back again with another short video on ADHD. Thank you for watching this channel, by the way. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Curious Snow Fox, a subscriber who wrote to me the other day and suggested that we do a short video on the comorbidity of ADHD with dyspraxia, or what is otherwise known as developmental coordination disorder. You can see the definition here. Dyspraxia, also known as DCD, uh, is common disorder that affects movement and coordination. Uh, it does not affect intelligence, good thing there, and it can also affect your coordination skills, your organization, your ability to play sports, drive a car, uh, or just basic balancing. So we can see some of the typical symptoms of dyspraxia or DCD here. Clumsiness, poor balance, poor posture, poor eye-hand coordination, poor handwriting, Perceptual issues, not so sure about that one. Fatigue, speech difficulty. Certainly, if it affects your coordination, speaking is a form of motor expression, and therefore we might see that as well. General disorganization, and finally, possibly low self-esteem. I think that's more of an outcome of DCD rather than a symptom that you have it. Uh, in any case, DCD is very common in ADHD children. Here's a review that was published about five or six years ago uh, by some colleagues down in Brazil, and it reviewed the literature on the relationship of DCD to ADHD. And they found in their review what we have known going back to the 1960s, and that is that children with ADHD have a high rate of developmental coordination disorder or motor coordination problems, more generally, if you will. 30 to 50% of them will be diagnosed with DCD or some type of motor coordination problem. So there's a very high comorbidity between these two disorders, as high or higher than the comorbidity of ADHD with the specific learning disabilities of delays in reading, math, spelling, language, and of course, handwriting, because difficulties with handwriting can be a specific part of a larger pattern of developmental coordination problems. So very high rate of association here. Now, why would we see that? And by the way, ADHD isn't the only disorder to show that. Of course, people on the autism spectrum have higher rates of not only ADHD, but also developmental coordination disorder as well. So um, dyspraxia or DCD is not specific to ADHD, but it does seem to show an elevated occurrence in people with other neurodevelopmental disorders. Now, let's answer the question, why? And we can see that very clearly as to why ADHD and DCD overlap by going back to studies of the development of the brain in kids with ADHD. I like this study by Philip Shaw. It was done oh, about over 10 years ago at least. Uh, and it's a study that followed large groups of typical children and ADHD children for 10 years and scanned their brains in order to look at the development of the cortex of the brain, that's the gray matter on the outside of the brain, uh, in kids with ADHD. So uh, a really nice study that was a multi-center study between the US and Canada in following these children up. Now let's go down to a beautiful diagram here that I like, which shows the degree of immaturity, the degree of lag in the maturation of gray matter in the brain. Now, look here, we're looking at the top down now, top down of the brain, so it's as if you're above looking straight down at the head, and here's the frontal lobe at the very upper part of the diagram. We're looking here at the diagrams listed as A, and you'll see that the top row is ADHD, and the bottom row is typically developing controls. And you see the ages shown beneath each picture of the brain. What are we seeing here? We're seeing that the brain is not maturing, particularly in the frontal lobes of the brain. Well, the frontal lobes are the motor brain. That's where we plan out what we're going to do, and then we sequence what we're going to do, and then as it moves further back in the brain, we start to execute 
complex motor programs, and then, of course, at the primary motor strip going across the very top central part of the cortex is where we finally do all of these gestures, uh, these motor actions that are involved in whatever activity that we're doing. So it makes sense that given the significant delay in maturation, that ADHD children aren't reaching peak cortical maturation in the brain as early as other kids are doing. And you can see that here. The typically developing kids where you see the light blue, they're starting to reach their maturation. The darker areas are where maturation is already uh, reaching peak. And you can see here that the ADHD kids are way behind. Uh, also, let's take a look from the side view of the brain. So we're kind of looking at the right side of the brain, although the left side would be showing a very similar pattern. And what you see here is, again, when do typical children develop peak cortical maturation? And you can see here that the thickness of the cortex is significantly problematic. That is the peak maturation in the brains of ADHD kids, and especially we see problems up in that frontal area of the brain. So uh, you can see it, more compelling evidence than anything I can show you that the peak thickness for those with ADHD and typically developing children are significantly different. And that suggests a delay in cortical maturation in the brain. So why do I harp about this? That's the motor brain. So if it's delayed, it makes perfect sense that people with ADHD would be at high risk for these developmental coordination immaturities, uh, the incoordination problem, that we see in dyspraxia or DCD. Um, so uh, if ADHD is a problem with the executive frontal motor brain, and that's where motor programming is taking place, no surprise, these kids are going to have motor problems. And by the way, we see that if we follow them up over time in their motor development, we see that the gross motor skills have a tendency to improve into adolescence and young adulthood, though they may never reach complete levels of typical normal development. On the other hand, the fine motor coordination problems seem to persist longer, according to some studies, uh, and certainly affect things like handwriting uh, and so on as the individual grows up. So we can see then that these kids are going to have a lot of trouble with handwriting, with motor expression of speech, with balance, with coordination, with sequencing, with organizing their motor behavior, possibly then spreading out into, when they get older, sports performance, and then into driving as well. So this is going to affect them across many different domains of major life activities. Now, to me, what is so, um, I think, sad about all of this is here's a study published just two years ago, and, and it is a review from Boston Children's Hospital of their experiences with 435 children that were referred to their learning disabilities clinic and examined for developmental coordination disorder. So these are kids four to 18 years of age. And what they were looking at is how well were the needs of these children being met? Uh, and they found that about 67%, or excuse me, 65% were diagnosed with dyspraxia, nearly 50% with DCD. By the way, the terms now are considered interchangeable. And the parents reported that while receiving the diagnosis was helpful, that it often took nearly three years on average for them to get that diagnosis, for them to be taken seriously about their concerns about their children's development. So there's quite a lag here between when families recognize DCD and when it's finally being diagnosed by professionals. They also found that many of these children, not unexpectedly, also had other neurodevelopmental disorders, language disorders, learning disabilities besides DCD. So we know that DCD is comorbid with other disorders, ADHD, of course, being one of those. Uh, and they found that they had difficulties accessing services for their children. And while 
therapy was available for nearly 94% of these children, the funding to support that therapy was available for only about 58% of these families, and 53% reported that it placed great financial strain on them to get the kind of assistance their children need. What kind of assistance are we talking about? Usually referral over to occupational and physical therapy, speech therapy, to some extent uh, clinical child psychology may become involved in this, particularly as it begins to impact areas of psychological functioning. We talked about low self-esteem, possibly uh, areas where depression might develop in some of these individuals. Certainly, the relationship of DCD with ADHD would call into services of mental health professionals like psychologists and psychiatrists. So uh, it just depends on what is there besides the motor problems as to what other assistance people are going to need besides that of physical and occupational therapy and, of course, speech therapy if there's an oral dyspraxia or speaking coordination difficulty. So uh, a lot of room for improvement out there for the care of people with developmental coordination disorder. Uh, but again, I want to thank a subscriber for drawing this to my attention and saying, you know, we need to highlight this in a video. Most people don't know about the overlap. And I took that for granted because we've known about it for nearly 60 years, that ADHD and DCD tend to go together at a very high rate of comorbidity. Okay, thanks for joining me this week. I hope you found the video informative. As always, think about subscribing if you're not a subscriber. And again, recommend us to others if you like the content of this channel. So take care, everybody. Be well.